Okay, I'll, I'll take it on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we have really two issues here. One is the root cause, and the other is the immediate need. And according to the Holy Quran, whoever is asking, if you can afford, give it. That's the taking care of the immediate need. But there should be a root cause work on them as well. We don't know these folks. They have all kinds of other problems, uh, drinking problems. My wife says, so you're giving him money because he can buy more beer, <laughs> more drinks? I said, well, what can I say? I mean, he's asking whatever I can afford, I give. But then we really need to think of the society's responsibility, really. So we have social issues that we need to really address. Uh, you know, we, I think we have all kinds of problems, drug problems, alcohol problems. Now, because of the economy, there are home problems, families. And they go to the extent of killing family members because of the economic stress. So, um, if somebody asks, I just give. I, I, I usually give because I'm afraid somebody's going to see me and think I'm greedy if I don't. <laughs> um, but there is a, a admonition in Scripture not to help people who refuse to work. If a man will not work, he should not eat, is a Scripture that they, they should be motivated to work. Um, I have a son who is a policeman who just told me the other day, Dad, do not give money to those guys who stand on the street corner and say, we'll work for food. Because you are contributing, you, you are enabling them and contributing to a problem in society that is not helping them. That's like, his analogy was, that's like feeding the bears in the park. You think you're helping them, but you're, you're creating more of a menace. I heard maybe the best thing we can do is, is give them an address where they can come if they're willing to work, or maybe better still is to buy a $5 gift card at Cracker Barrel, and if you're gonna give, rather than give money, to give a gift certificate at some place where they can only get food. If I can um, just kind of follow up on that. Um, <clears throat> not quoting scripture, but um, Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> Seriously though, there's this one, I don't know if you remember the show in the detail that I do, but sure. nevertheless. There's this wonderful moment at the very beginning when Tevye the Milkman is like walking on his way home at the end of a, a long week and a beggar comes up to him and he gives him a coin. And the beggar looks at him and says, one kopeck, last week you gave me two kopecks. <laughs> and and Tevye says, well, I'm sorry, I had a bad week. And the, the beggar says, because you had a bad week, I should suffer. <laughs> okay. This is a Jewish beggar, I mean, you can tell. but. Just, it's also a Jewish value. Um, I mean, for better or worse, it's a Jewish value. If you throw money at a beggar in Jerusalem, they'll throw it back, okay? I mean, because they, this, this whole context of, it's about giving from, you know, uh, from a good place. If you're not doing it, they're doing you a favor. Because, you know, if there weren't poor people, we wouldn't be able to fulfill one of the highest commandments. We wouldn't be able to be you know, healing the world if it weren't for, the, uh, uh, for, their, for their needs. And the connection between people with the ability to help and the people who need the help is part of one of the foundations of society. I mean, that, that, that bond between all of us caring for each other, it helps us all, having said that. So I keep dollars in my pocket to give to the poor, and I do it all the time. Um, and my wife, who's perhaps wiser than I, and uh, admittedly a little less comfortable, you know, uh, with people who walk up to her on the street, uh, she keeps in her glove compartment for when you're rolling off the, the highway, Pop-Tarts and boxes of, uh, you know, Frosted Flakes, the little ones and stuff. So when they say that they're hungry, she gives them food, okay, because that's really the value. If a person is in, uh, is in immediate need, that's the highest value uh, in, in terms of who you should give to. So you can't say no. Um, but if it's food that they need, she gives them food. Hmm. Anybody else? Malcolm X once said, and Malcolm X was part of the 
the Nation of Islam that attempted to move African Americans off of welfare. And he said, look, you, you should not be on welfare if you fare well. And he said that just because a fisherman gives a fish a free worm does not make the fisherman the fish's friend. <laughs> and there's a lot of logic in that. <laughs> Our church uh, is located in the poorest, one of the, the it is the poorest zip code in, in Louisville Metro, the California community. And on 18th Street, um, which is a very poor area, 18th and uh, Kentucky Street, we purchased the building, renovated it, and our members bring clothes, and we feed from that building right there in that, in that neighborhood. And they feel good about it. The only problem is, is that we often see the same people coming back week after week after week to get the same food. And my challenge is to get those who are involved in that ministry to see that you might be doing them a disservice because you're not empowering them. And in as much as African Americans are disproportionately on welfare. I think that the great challenge for African American leaders is to break the welfare, the dependency cycle that many African Americans have through the true means of elevating any people, and that's character and education. And that's why I took on that extra responsibility as being president of Simmons College of Kentucky because the true, the best way to get people off welfare is to give them skills so they can become self-reliant and when you become self-reliant, it causes you to have self-respect and dignity. Uh, I just recall this question was posed to Mother Teresa, the famous 20th century nun who became internationally famous for her radical sense of charity and the, the sisters that followed her, she uh, would say if someone approaches you on the street and you have a dollar and they need a dollar, it's their dollar. But now obviously her life was dedicated to, approach, to uh, addressing the systematic, the systemic rather, uh, situation. She picked people up who were dying on the streets of Calcutta and took them to her home and eventually that became uh, uh, a hosp hospital, and so she addressed it from both ways, but uh, we might find her approach simplistic, but uh, if someone in front of us is hungry, whether it's to give them a gift card, a Pop-Tart, or a buck, uh, it's their gift card, it's their Pop-Tart, and it's their buck, but also, if all you've got is a $100 bill in your pocket, I'd suggest you give that to a shelter. <laughs> I like your optimism. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> uh, this, it is a really difficult uh, question because I, I'm passionate about helping people build their uh, self-reliance. Um, but I'm also aware that um, we can communicate something about values and hope by the way we interact with people. Yeah. And so I, I, I want to uh, give something and say something at the same time, uh, you know, God bless you, or, or something that, that helps to communicate a value. And, and the reason is something that I wanted to tell you all about that happened to me. I lived in Haiti for just over a year do, doing my doctoral research on the role of the Catholic Church in Haiti during the Duvalier dictatorship. And so I, I went all over the countryside doing interviews. And I went into the home of an um, extremely poor uh, peasant woman, dirt floor, thatched roof, all the furniture had been made from just split wood. And she hadn't been expecting me. And uh, so after the, the, the gathering, uh, she said, well, I, 
I'm, I'm really sorry, I didn't expect you. Um, I, I want to give you something. And she gave me a one gourd note, which is uh, equivalent of 20 cents in the United States, but enough to supplement a family's food for a day in that context and that time. And I was very moved by that. And uh, I knew I had to accept it. <laughs> uh, but I said, why are you giving me this? And she said, um, I hear that you are here without family. Um, and I realized that from her point of view, that was real poverty, um, that I didn't have a, a safety net and I didn't have family. And her heart went out to me and she gave me what she had, which was this gourd note. So I, I learned something so important about values in her gesture. Uh, I try to remember that when I'm having that kind of interaction with somebody.